Well, it's now episode 8, which is just Interpolation Part 2. But before we start this episode, I would like to give you a very short recap and a very fast recap of what happened in the previous episode so that we can connect it in this episode, okay? So, in episode 7, we assume a problem where you need to buy your dream car, which is actually this one. And it's assumed to cost 4 million. However, you have no money, so you consider two borrowing options. So, in the first borrowing option, the effective interest rate is determined already to be 10%. But in the second borrowing option, the effective rate is not yet found. So, we need to interpolate. But before that, we need to start first with the trial and error, where we need to get the present value of the principal and the present value of the interest using interest rates that are higher than 7%. And why is that again? It's because in this borrowing option, the proceeds are clearly lesser than the principal. So we are sure that the effective rate is higher than the nominal rate as stated here. So in this borrowing option number two, again, we are sure that the effective rate is higher than 7%. Now, I told you also in the past episode that let's get the present value of the principal and the interest using 10%. So this rate is just based on my judgment. So let's do that one after this short intro. So now, again, this is the borrowing option number two. And the effective interest rate is unknown. But we are sure that it is not 7%. And why is that again? It is because the principal and the proceeds are not equal. And again, if the proceeds received by the debtor is lesser than the principal of the loan that he or she is to pay in the future, which is happening right here, then the effective rate is higher than the nominal rate. So therefore, the effective interest rate is higher than 7%. Now, let's compute the present value of the principal and the interest using 10%, okay? So let's start with the principal. So the principal times 1 plus i raised to the power of negative n, that's present value of 1, right? So I know you remember that. So substituting, we have 4,250,000 as the principal times 1.10 raised to the power of negative 4. So, the factor for this one is 0.6830134553365 and so on. Now, multiply 4,250,000 with this factor and you will get 2,902,807. So, now, let's go to the interest. So, the interest to be paid is 7% times 4,250,000 which is equal to 297,500, okay, times the present value ordinary annuity, which is 1 minus 1 plus i raised to the power of negative n over i. I hope you remember that. So, substituting, we have 1 minus 1 1.10 raised to the power of negative 4 and then divide it by 0.10. And if you summarize this, you will get this factor. So, this factor times 297,500, then we will have 943,035 as the present value of the interest. Now, the sum of this present value of the principal and the present value of the interest is 3,845,842. So, it's very clear that 10% is not the effective rate for this borrowing option because the total present value here did not equal to 4 million, which is the proceeds and supposed to be the targeted answer because this is supposed to be the initial value or the present value of the debt. However, don't worry because this result of this trial and error will help us get the effective rate that will result to the total present value of 4 million later. Okay, so we can summarize the results like this. 
So 10% is equivalent to a present value of 3,845,842. Okay? But as I have told you, you need two rates and you need two present values. So this is the first one already. So let's get the second rate. But I'll share to you my personal technique in this trial and error. Because normally, I use the nominal rate, which is the 7% in this case, and the principal, which is 4,250,000 in this situation, as part of the trial and error results to save time. But the question is, are we sure that if we use the 7%, this nominal rate, we are really going to get the 4,250,000? If we do this, of course I'm sure. We have proven that in episode 6, if I'm not mistaken. So, we have proven that if we use the nominal rate in getting the present value of the principal and the interest, the sum of their present values will equal to the principal. And if you don't believe me, then try it yourself. So, substitute this point and here and here and here with 0.07. And then get their present values and then add them. And I'm pretty sure it will result to 4,250,000. So anyways, we already have the two rates with their present values. So the question is what to do next. So next, we will have to put X here in the third line, which stands for the unknown effective interest rate, which if we get this and if we use this, in this process, we are to expect to get 4 million. Or in other words, the third line means we are finding the X rate. That will give us the present value of 4 million. So, the next step for interpolation will be discussed in a little while. So again, we have this already after the trial and error. So next, let's put some brackets. And then let's deduct this 10% from the 7%. So this brackets actually means 7% minus 10%. Then we're going to get negative 3%. And then 7% minus this unknown rate. And since we cannot get the answer, let's call this temporarily as D. But you need to remember, D is 7% minus X. Okay? It's needed in the next steps. Okay? So, let's put D here and also here. And if you noticed, you have made a fraction. So, the difference of these numbers enclosed in this small bracket became the numerator, while the difference of these two, described by this bigger bracket, became the denominator. Okay? And you know what? You just need to do the same in this side. So, 4,250,000. Minus 3,845,842 is 404,158, which will be the numerator for this side. Now, for the denominator, we have 4,250,000 minus 4,000,000, which is 250,000. Okay? So, after that, we need to cross multiply. So, negative 3 times 250,000, and we have negative 750,000. So, remember, you need to be careful with the positive and the negative signs, okay? And 404,158 times D, and then we will have 404,158D, okay? Actually, we're doing this because we need to get the D to get the X later which is the effective rate that we are looking for. So, let's continue. So, to get the D, let's divide both sides of the equation with 404,158. So, this will be cancelled and this will be 750,000 negative divided by 404,158. And if you simplify this, you will get D is equivalent to negative 1 0.85570989568956 but remember d is also 7% minus x right so let's make this equivalence of d into an equation so on the left side 
we have this negative 1.85570989596 and on the right side we have 7 minus x so now we need to get x and to do that we need to deduct this 7 from both sides so the result here is negative x while on this side we have negative 8.85570989596 now, to eliminate the negative symbol, we need to divide both sides of the equation with negative 1. And we will get x is equivalent to 8.85577098956%. Or, if we round it off, that's 8.8557%, which is already the effective rate. Now, those are the steps for the interpolation. But before we conclude that this is really the effective rate, let's check this answer if this is really correct. But that checking would be on the next episode to keep this video short. So if you learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and select all to be updated on my next videos. So thank you for watching and see you on the next one.